Um, okay. Hello everyone. We're going to start solo. Um, yeah, it's not going to be a long class today because we are not a lot of people here today. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to do study unit three. This is the part of the, where the research proposal is going to start. It's going to be, um, I'm going to do this session today and next week's session and then Christelle and um, Dr. Dorette is going to take the other classes. Um, our session outline is going to be what is a research proposal and why is it important that we're going to do this. Um, we're going to look so long at the research topic or your title, your keywords, research introduction and problem statement and then you have an assignment for in a month's time so we're going to discuss that and then you know, we wanted to have a class activity but we'll see maybe just to divide in two groups. Okay, I'm going to start with the research proposal. Okay, as you know you, at the end of the semester you guys are going to do a research proposal you have to hand that in. So that is what that is our main goal at the end of the day is that you need to apply what, what the theory is saying. All right. So the research proposal is the overall plan, scheme, structure and strategy designed to obtain answers to the research question or problems that constitute your research project. So, for example, if you build a house, you always have a blueprint for your house that the architect draw up before you can build your house. So if this is the same, you need to have a research proposal before you can do your research project. The reason for this is because in a research proposal you can beforehand see what the problems are going to be, what are the difficulties going to be, and you can adapt your study to make it easier for you. A research proposal, proposal should convince the reader that the researcher holds the potential significance and relevance, that the design of the study is sound and the researcher is capable of conducting the study successfully. Now, if I'm, I'm from environmental management, and maybe some of you are from psychology, so if you read my work, then I should convey my work in such a way that you should understand what I'm saying. I should convince you that, listen, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. So that is the, that is the main goal at the end of the day. You can't just put <coughs> literature, just copy-paste everything, and you don't hear the, the writer's work you should um, speak in your own voice. The primary purpose of writing a research proposal is to obtain the permission and or funds necessary con to conduct the study. Now, in your case, um, you write a proposal to gain permission to do your research project. And if you do your master's as well, you're going to do a research proposal, it's going to be accepted or not accepted, and then you can do your, your master's project. Um, like for, if it's for funds, then it's maybe like for our FIO project. It's like a tender that you, that you do at the municipality or at an international organization. Um, you also need to illustrate that you are informed enough about all the factors to be taken into consideration to complete the project successfully and that you can communicate an understanding and a competence for engaging in the proposed study. This is what I just said earlier. You should... You should talk in your own voice. I shouldn't be reading Bobby and Muton and whoever else. I should hear Furi. I should hear her voice. Okay, a research proposal contains the same elements that a research project has, but it is written before the research project. Now, it doesn't contain all the elements. It's just a very shortened version of it because it's your plan. It's not in-depth and very broad. The writing style is very formal and you should always write in the third person. You don't write there. Um, out of my own experience, I have found that. You don't write that. The researcher found that. You should always speak that. Keep the sentences short and avoid long jog and fold sentences. Now, in long sentences, I'm talking about a sentence that is five lines long. I mean, that is just, that's just too long. But you can write a sentence like two sentences, but then sometimes what a student is doing is it's like very short sentences, like five words, a point, five words, then rather link that sentences. And 
the other thing that we picked up that students usually use is a semicolon. <laughs> and that is not, it's not a linking for a sentence, it's just to add information. So I'd rather use words like additionally or something, just to link that sentences. Um, technical terms and jargon should be limited. Now, technical terms is like, um, for my masters, I write like EIA, SIA, EIIR. I mean, you're not going to know what it is when you're going to read it. So, if you start your proposal and you're going to use abbreviations, then write it in full and in brackets you write the abbreviation. And from there on after you can use the abbreviation. But later on in your text, just write it out again in full so you can just remind the reader, oh yes, that was what it's standing for. Right. Um, avoid lack of variation. Don't use the same nouns over and over again. Now, examples of this is students like to use additionally a lot. <laughs> additionally, you only use when you want to add something. If, so, if you write something and you want to add on that concept, then you use additionally. The other thing that they use, um, that students <coughs> also like to use is um, in regards of. It's just, they just throw it in there a lot. <laughs> Um, so be aware of that. Don't use that. Oh, the other thing is that they also like to use if you write firstly. Firstly, I want to state then and then and then. If you say firstly, then there must be a secondly and a lastly. You don't just throw the firstly in there. So that is also important to remember. Avoid spelling and grammatical errors. This is very very important. Um, well, in my case, I'm very strict on that. So, and if I just start reading and I found grammatical errors and stuff like that, then I just, it, it's not nice to mold work like that. In other cases, um, when your study leaders or they, they don't pick that up at all, it doesn't matter to them. So, it's not necessarily going to be someone marking your work that just passes it by and stuff like that. It's maybe going to be someone that's very strict about it, so it has to be correct all the time. And even if you do your masters, not, I don't think in this case they're going to give in to a um, language editor now. Oh, so um, well, yeah. But if you do your masters and you write a proposal, before you submit your proposal, you have to send it to a language editor, and that costs actually a lot of money. So that is why they do this because the university don't accept stuff like that. Um, ensure that your proposal is always balanced and the sections are in proportion. What this means is that don't write like an, like an introduction of half a page, but your layout of your chapters is three pages long. It should be in proportion. Your introduction should be like three to four pages with your problem statement. Your objectives are like half a page. It should be in proportion. Okay. So I just drew this thing just so you guys could see what a research proposal consists of. Now first you're going to start with your title, your topic. Now we already gave you guys your topic, but you're going to need to write your own title. Then you have your keywords, it follows right under your title. And then you get your introduction and problem statement, which we're going to get to now. Next week we're going to do the research objectives, also the research questions your central theoretical statement, and then Christelle and um, Dr. Doret is going to do the methodology. Now, in your methodology, you have a literature review, an empirical investigation. This is where your sampling comes in and the methods that you used and so on. Then we're also going to do the significance of the study, your provi provisional chapter layout, and then at, at the end, your bibliography. Now, the research topic. Okay, this is the first and the most important step for your research. If you get this wrong, then <coughs> your study is not going to go very fluently. This is your, to your topic or your title is what you want to know. So if the reader is reading that, he will immediately pick up that this is what it's about. The research topic is like a signpost. It sets the researcher on a specific path and defines the territory to be explored. That's what I just said now. Um, the statement about what exactly we want to find out or achieve by undertaking this research will flow from a general problem area or a topic of interest. 
ensure that the topic is researchable before the research project is refined. Now, before we, well, we gave you your topic, but if you have to choose your own topic, then you must ensure that it's actually researchable. If you are wondering about something, if you have interest in something, you need to make sure that it is researchable. You can't just write anything about anything because there's nothing out there. Now, how do you find your research topic? Now, you can either find it in practice. Some of you are already in practice now, like you work for the municipality or something. Now you find a problem there and you want to solve this problem. And then you can formulate your study from that. You make that, that is your problem statement and you write your topic about that. Other thing is that you write it in theory. Um, you may, be, may have read something and there's a theory that's saying this and you want to test, is this theory correct? Or you want to measure one theory against another theory. Previous research, this is very important. Um, you should make sure if, there's, if you choose a topic like the FAO. You must make sure that there's no other study out there, otherwise what new knowledge are you going to bring to the table? So, and even um, last week I said um, research begets more research, and this is where it comes in. If you read a, re a research proposal or a research project of someone else, then you can find maybe a new topic for yourself in there. Um, personal interest and intellectual curiosity. This is just if something interests you, but sometimes this could be a problem because it's more driven about your curiosity or your interest. It doesn't bring anything new to the table. So be careful of that. And um, how should a good topic or a title look like? Now, we've given you your topics. Now, you must reformulate it. Now, if I read it, this is the list that I must see. It should be interesting. It should be researchable. The topic should be significant, otherwise why are you doing the study? Is it manageable? So can you actually, as one person or as a group, can you handle all this data? Can you do the field studies? That is what they do, um, talk about as manageable. And does the topic comply to the ethical considerations? So if it touches on ethical considerations, then I should maybe have asked you, I, have you been to the university's ethical procedure or something like that? Okay, after the title, you have your keywords. Now, this is the key concept in your study. Usually what they do is they take these words and if your masters or your honors or doctors are finished, then you have your keywords. If I go into Google in the university search engine and I put in uh, agricultural disasters, then they're going to throw out all the articles that have that word in. So that is why these keywords are important. Usually you have six to eight keywords, but nothing less than five. So five is the minimum that you have. Like for your, your FAO project, you can have agriculture disaster, um, disaster risk reduction, um, no, something like that. Cropping techniques, that will be your keywords, all right. Okay, now the introduction. Okay, the purpose of an introduction is lo to locate research in the widest subject area by offering a broad overview and a background of the topic. So you contextualize your research. Um, so you have to do a bit of literature review, but it's not going to be as long and as intensive as um, the literature study that you're going to do in your research project. You just have to introduce me to this is the problem, this is what we're going to look at. Um, you need to justify your study, um, motivate why you feel that the study will contribute to something original, new, and significant. So if you, if you write in your introduction literature that you have found, and then you should write, um, this is why my study is significant, or this study will contribute to this. Um, in the introduction, you should always refer to literature because otherwise, where do you get your information from? They're going to ask you that. Um, and you must also say that this person said this about this topic and this one um, don't agree with this one. It's in contrast with that one and so on. Um, 
okay, you should also <coughs> state how you can fill the re uh, gap in the research. Um, it's also in your introduction, you use a funnel effect. Um, I think I mentioned in the last class as well. Um, you, if you're going to do something that's international and you are going to do, or you're going to do something now on Mozambique, then you can start globally. Look at the climate change impact globally on agriculture. Then you funnel it down to Mozambique. And even if you have to go further, then you funnel it down to a specific community in Mozambique, for example. Um, remember always, structure the introduction so that you will, you will be able to provide some clues about the logic behind the sampling strategy. So you must just mention that I'm going to do research in Mozambique on this community with so many groups. It's just very short, not in detail. Um, the problem statement, it forms part of your introduction, so it goes hand in hand. Now, the problem statement outlines a specific problem which your study will focus on. Now, this also goes hand in hand with your title, because before you can formulate your title, then you should already know what your problem is before you can write your problem statement. Um, the problem statement continues issue of difficulty that researchers experience within practice or in theory. Um, what you need solutions on, or it is something that interests you, that you think is a problem in the community or something like that. The problem statement should be spe very specific. It must be clear and very focused because that is what your study is going to be about. You want to solve this problem in your research. Um, an effective problem statement always asks why this research needs to be conducted. So if I look at your paper and I read it, then I should ask this. Why should this research be conducted? And your problem statement should give you that answer. Um, indicate the problem. Okay, the problem statement indicates the problem still needs to be solved and why is it necessary to be solved. Um, your introduction and your problem statement together is about three to four pages. Your whole proposal is going to be about ten pages long. So, and the, only the problem statement is about one and a half to one pages. Um, yeah. Okay, that is it for today. So this is very short. Now, um, on the 27th of March, you're going to hand in your first assignment. Now, I've also put this on Ifundi, but I picked up an error there. It says 27th of February, so don't stress about that. I will fix it. So it's the 27th of March, so it's today in a month's time, and it's more than enough time. Now, I don't know if you've read through this, but I'm going to do it anyway, in any case. So for this assignment, you're going to divide into your groups. Now, you have already had your topics for your groups. Gustav also put the list on Ifundi yesterday. You know, so if, you, if you're not sure, then you should just go there. All right, and you're only going to hand in one paper per group. So there's not going to be four papers for each group. Only one paper. Um, you're going to write a good articulated title. Um, this, remember, this is also going to be your title for your research project in the second semester. It can maybe still be adapted a bit, but this is going to be your starting point. Then you're going to write an introduction, a problem statement, um, a central theoretical statement, and your research goals and objectives and your questions. So we're going to do the, the last part we're going to do next week. Um, and you should also include your keywords. So basically, you're going to start with the first section of your research proposal. Okay, the guidelines, I already said you open only one document for your group on Google Docs, and you share it with all three of our lectures. Um, you work together in this group on Google Docs. After you've finished it on Google Docs, you save it as a document, then you identify one group member. Only that one submits it on Ifundi. Not four times or something like that. Only the one time. Um, on the 27th of March, there will be a slot open from your... Yeah. So I guess you have said from 1, uh, from 1 a.m. until 12 p.m. Yeah. the same day. So you, you really have the whole day to submit it. But I think a month's time is more than enough time to work on that. Um, you submit a sum, okay, you submit it during that time slot. Please don't email it to us. 
we are not going to accept it if it's going to be emailed to us we we're just not going to do that you need to submit it on the Fundi. that is where we're going to get it okay and any live submissions will be penalized A technical huh? Okay, the technical requirements, aerial, font size 11, spacing one and a half, total pages for this would be 45 pages, nothing more than five pages for this, all right. Um, now, I think it's a bit small there, but the, I've also put an evaluation criteria on Effundi, so you can see what we will be looking at when we um, assess your proposal. So there's the title introduction, um, it's 15 marks, this should, this should only be one page long. Um, so we're going to look at the title clear and representing the study, does the background of the introduction guide the reader to the problem, is there enough information to contextualize the problem, is there a theoretical context and does the introduction build up to the problem statement. So that is what we are going to look at to get, give you a mark out of 15. The, for the problem statement, is the problem that is being researched presented clearly? Is the problem statement contextualized? And can the problem statement be um, studied in the um, proposed theoretical framework? And this is going to be 15 marks. Research questions and objectives. Does the research questions flow logically after the problem statement? Is the theory reflecting the research question? Does the research question relate to the title of the study? Does all the research questions relate to each other and is it answerable? And does the research questions relate to the research objectives? Now this is going to count more, it's going to be 25 marks. The central theoretical statement, does the statements reflect the gut feeling of the study? Is the arguments being supported by the literature? Is the assumptions made related to the study? And does the theory relate to the study? This is also going to be 25 marks. Language editing and technical aspects, um, it should be academic language that you use, it should be logical flow of sentences, paragraphs and ideas. Um, the referencing in the text and your bibliography should be correct. Um, we use a, your Harvard style and there is a booklet available so you can just look there. Um, and is the numbering of the headings handled in the correct manner as well. Um, then. Maybe you should just say something about the peer assessment. So she's just going to tell you about the peer assessment. Okay. Um, what, what we want to do is um, we want to put the peer assessment form to the bottom of the So what will happen on the 27th is that you will submit your document, but each person in the class needs to get, uh, to, within that time period, on the 27th, needs to get into your funding. And there will be an Excel sheet that you will download. We will, we will name it um, assessment one, this one, and assessment two, okay? Um, so what you'll do then is just download the Excel document um, to your computer, fill in your other three partners in your group, and then there will be a criteria, about five criteria, um, that you can score them on. Okay. Um, and then after you've completed this, you save this, and you load it back up to, um, Onto your Fundi, this assessment submission um, that we will open for you. Okay. So um, in the in the assessments, you'll have access to both these assignments, um, but it's going to differ. The one year, one person is going to submit um, the entire document, and the second one you have to submit your own Excel sheet. So each and it's um, individual on your own. Assess people in your group and. And then what happens is um, we might we might maybe just discuss the, the mark allocations um, because I think the peer assessment maybe counts a bit more. But we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll put the um, things the changes on the screen as well. Um, I'll be looking at it. Um, so what will happen now with the marks is that your your proposal or this part of your proposal that you that you did as a group will count about um, 80 to 90 marks, and the peer assessment will then fill in the gap. 
So each person won't necessarily have the same mark for the sign. Because we'll calculate it then, take the um, middle, average, the average, thank you. And we'll take the average and then um, work it up um, with the sensor. Yeah. Um, you wanted to ask Eric? You assess them on their participation. Um, the criteria will, will um, the criteria will include the contribution they made. Um, rough drop. Um, we will be looking at uh, the participation in group discussions. We felt that you know it's also necessary for you guys to kind of interact. And um, even if it's by email, yeah, even by email or whatever, you can then um, uh, assess the person in terms of that. The other one um, is the contribution that they made. Was it a meaningful contribution? Okay. Um, timely response and communication with your group. Um, sometimes, and we've had situations as well where you dish out the responsibilities or you have people working on different parts, but this person does not communicate back. So you will be saying, okay, where are you now with this? And they will either go, no, fine, 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 or they, go, or they won't say anything at all, okay? But just before you hand in the assignment, whoops, there's an email, everything's there. It's, so everybody's worried, and is this guy going to come through? Do we have to actually uh, start doing this on our own, et cetera, et cetera? <clears throat> so that's just to, to indicate um, to what level you know, interact with one another, another and communicate as well. Um, then reliability, do you feel the person was reliable in the assignment or not? Um, and then also to what extent do you feel the person engaged with subject matter? Now this is important because you might have a person that just <coughs> goes out reading, okay, great, copy and paste all of the valid stuff that they want to and send it to Google Docs or send it to someone. So um, it's important also to um, name. It's important also that the people working on the different sections, or in the group, or however you work, that you engage with the material and actually come up with a meaningful contribution. So that's the criteria that we're currently looking at. Um, we we will probably uh, we'll put this up as well. You will you'll enter the Excel sheet and then you'll see the. But that's, does that make sense? So for the 27th, you firstly have to make sure that one person in the group loads up your assignment document. For the equity, for assessment one, etc. And then each person in the class must make sure that they fill in one Excel sheet and load it back up onto the group. Okay. The other thing is also, uh, you know, the, the participation. Um, might not seem like a, or, or the fear of assessment story might not seem like very, a very important thing. Um, and one person in the group might decide, ah, I'm not, I don't have time, or I don't feel like it, or whatever. Uh, if you don't hand in the Excel assessment or the Excel sheet on your fully for your peers, you're going to penalize the guy that didn't hand it in. Okay. Because everybody's asked to make him trouble to actually do peer assessments and whatever. And they just so you will then be the um, in that matter. Okay, does that make sense? You want to ask something? Yeah. Uh, oh, both of you. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, only one can go.
start working on it and yes. that is also why we have that workshop session yes. because yes. then you can come to us and say how, how does my introduction look like and then we can try to work a bit on this work a bit on that yes. so and that's when, why it's there but when you start discussing it in your groups you know and you're having difficulty with this right so we can sit with you and say no okay but if you start the introduction look at these things um one one guideline that i can normally is or give now um, while they go through while you go through the, these, this activity now um, is all of the elements in your flight start with them yeah. start reading up on them and your keywords I understand you get like this whole heap of stuff that you now can do in your introduction but, but we are all here and um, in your group as well you might have a lot of people that have done research so that's why we put you guys together as well in a group I will also put a sample for you guys on if on how a proposal looks like. Just an example of someone that has already done the research. So you can see, even if it's not the same topic, if it's about something very much different, then you can see, well, we included this and this, and how broad did we go, how in depth did we go, just to, so you can guys see that as well. So the so other one's not going to see it. No, <laughs> it's a blind peer review. So um, in that sense, we, we are the only people that will know Calvin has even been yeah. So I don't, don't worry. And you're going, to do, you're going to do all three members of your group in one document as well. So flip that to the um, It's a blind process. Um, it's, you know, it's difficult because we, we started these um, these group works and things like that um, with the aim of actually making sure that people share knowledge and support one another, especially like this if they're on different levels of, of research and those types of things as well. Um, but I understand, you know, a lot of people have told us that in their um, pre-grad classes or somewhere along the line they did group work and it just totally was an entire mess. And either one person had to go and do everything, or um, you know there were people struggling with some people in their groups and everything. So this is something that we don't necessarily just want to put in the mark saying, "Did your members participate? One to five, or whatever. One to twenty, or whatever." We want you kind of to um, because if you have someone that that lands in this thing like on number 99 just before you have to, I mean, you had the total frustration of dealing with this person with this entire assignment, but you can't really say that they did not contribute, that they did not participate. So you want to break it down so you guys can actually make a meaningful assessment of the group, but it's a blind one. Right. Yes, yes. But I think that 
It's an individual process. I don't necessarily want to make the peer assessment any, have, have, having to do anything with the group. So when you do it, now you do it, it's your business. You just have to make sure that you hand in an assessment for that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Now we, I wanted to actually do a class activity where you guys could start writing on this. So me and Christelle could assist you, but I don't know how many of your members are here. Maybe. So who's in group one? Let me see who's, who's here from group one. Only one. Group two. Also only one. Three. Two. Okay. Four. No, you are three. You are the winners. <laughs> 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 group four. Group four. Okay, group five. <laughs> okay, group five. Only you. And you. Okay, group six. Seven, and eight, three. Okay, so, you know, the guys that are alone, I think you can just sit with them, you know, and the guys that are, have a group member, yeah, I think just sit with the other group member now so we can just start with that. Yeah. <laughs> 